Okay, here's another example. Let's pretend that we had a 20 milliliter stock solution A with a molarity of 12 molar, or 12 moles per liter. And we're asked what concentration it would have if we diluted it to one liter. How do we do this problem? I'll show you. First, we have to remember that solution A is our stock or more concentrated solution. And we set it up using our old reliable equation, M stock times V stock equals M dill times V dill. Oh yeah, I said the word dill. We set this up like this. Keeping in mind that the concentration of our stock solution is 12 moles per liter according to our problem. And the volume of our stock solution is 20 milliliters or 0 0.02 liters. We've been asked to determine the concentration of the diluted solution if we diluted it to one liter. You'll notice this is slightly different from our previous problems. But once we set it up correctly, it's just simple algebra. So now we solve for m dill which I'll let you do on your own. This brings us back to our previously mentioned problem. If you took 10 mil portion of 14.8 molar ammonia stock solution and diluted it to a total volume of 0.5 liters, what would the concentration of the final solution be? And here are some additional questions that you can do for practice. I won't read them to you or solve them, but we'll let you read them, consider them, and see if you can solve them on your own. One thing I should finish by saying, is that I strongly recommend that you review section 4.5 of our text and practice problems on the subject of solution concentration to become more fluent with these kinds of problems. This brings us to a new subject, neutralization reactions. You see, we can add acids and bases together and they'll neutralize each other. As we discussed earlier, acid-base reactions are called neutralization reactions. Now to neutralize a base, we add the same number of moles of acid to it as there are moles of base in the solution. Now most neutralization questions ask us to figure out how much acid must be added to neutralize a certain amount of base. To do such questions, we must first figure out how many moles of hydroxide are present in solution. And next, figure out what volume of acid at the given molarity would be needed to provide the same number of moles of acid as there are moles of base. Here are some problems. What volume of 0.115 molar perchloric acid solution is needed to neutralize 50 milliliters of 0 0.0875 molar sodium hydroxide? And second, what volume of 0.128 molar HCl is needed to neutralize 2.87 grams of magnesium hydroxide? I should warn you that while I am going to do part A, I will not do part B, but will let you attempt it on your own. So here's what part A says. What volume of 0.115 molar perchloric acid solution is needed to neutralize 50 milliliters of 0.0875 molar sodium hydroxide? Whew, that's a long one to read, and maybe an even more challenging one to do. How do we do it? We have to remember that in this question, we basically have a container that has 50 milliliters of base in it, and we're gradually trying to add this 0.115 molar HClO4 solution to it until we completely neutralize the base. We also have to remember that to neutralize a base, we have to add the same number of moles of acid as there are moles of base. So first, we have to figure out how many moles of sodium hydroxide there are in 50 milliliters of a 0 0.0875 molar solution of sodium hydroxide. We do that, of course, using dimensional analysis, beginning with the value that I have, which contains no denominator units, 50 milliliters. I'm going to, of course, place a set of parentheses immediately to the right, and in its denominator, I will have milliliters, keeping in mind that the term M molar stands for moles per liter, I'm going to want to convert milliliters to liters. Thus, my milliliters cancel each other out, and I've placed in the numbers, indicating correctly that there are indeed 1,000 milliliters in one liter. I'm now going to place a second set of parentheses, and of course, they're going to have liters in the denominator. Keeping in mind that what I'm doing right now is trying to figure out how many moles of sodium hydroxide are found in 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide at this concentration, I want to use the molarity in this set of parentheses. For this solution, there are indeed 0 0.0875 moles in one liter. I throw this all through my calculator, and I end up discovering that 50 milliliters of this solution end up equaling 0 0.00437 moles of hydroxide. 
So that is how many moles of hydroxide, OH minus, are present in this solution. At this point, I have to remember that I need to add the same number of moles of acid, that is 0.004375 moles, in order to neutralize that many moles of base. So I have to figure out what volume of 0.115 molar acid will give me 0.004375 moles. How do I do that? What I'm going to do is begin with the value that has no denominator units, 0.004375 moles. I'll place a set of parentheses to the right, putting moles in the denominator and liters in the numerator. For this acid solution, there are indeed 0.115 moles in one liter. That will indeed give me a volume. I plug and chug and discover that the final answer is 0.038 liters. So what that means is that if I had 50 milliliters of a 0.0875 molar solution of sodium hydroxide, and I separately had a big container of 0.115 molar HClO4, I would have to add 0.038 liters or 38 milliliters of my HCl4 to my sodium hydroxide to add the exact same number of moles of acid as I have moles of base and thereby reach neutralization. We now turn to the subject of titration problem. See, frequently we're in situations where I've got a solution that I know contains base, but I have no clue how much base is in it. How in the world can I figure that out? Well, see, when we don't know how much base is present in a solution, we can actually figure out how much there is by slowly adding a known solution of acid to the base until we reach neutral pH, which is pH 7.0. Now that pH level is called the equivalence point. At that point we can then figure out how many moles of base were in the original solution by calculating how many moles of acid we added. This process is called an acid-base titration. Now, For simple titrations, those two numbers, the moles of acid and the moles of base, should be equal at the equivalence point. I should point out that we won't worry about more complex titrations until a later time. As mentioned, of course, this whole process is called an acid-base titration. There are other kinds of titrations as well, but I'm not going to make you worry about them for now. So let's take a look at some problems. Imagine if it takes 200 milliliters of 0.05 molar HBr to neutralize 250 milliliters of KOH. How many moles of KOH were in the original solution? And this other example. If it takes 30 mils of 0.1 molar HCl to neutralize 400 mils of sodium hydroxide, then what was the concentration of the original sodium hydroxide? Let's go ahead and tackle part A. Once again it states, if it takes 200 milliliters of 0.05 molar HBr to neutralize 250 milliliters of KOH, how many moles of KOH were found in the original solution? Now first, we need to figure out how many moles of HBr we added. It says that we added 200 milliliters of 0.05 molar HBr. How many actual moles of HBr is that? How do I figure that out? Well, of course, what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin with the value that has no denominator units, 200 milliliters. If I put 200 milliliters here and I place a set of parentheses here, of course, I'm going to want to have milliliters be in the denominator of that set. Keeping in mind that molarity stands for moles per liter, I can go ahead and put liters in the numerator. I'm now going to place a second set of parentheses here, keeping liters in the denominator, and put 0.05 moles in the numerator. Is this a true statement for this particular solution? In other words, are there indeed 0.05 moles of HBr in one liter of this HBr solution? Yes, there are. You'll note that all of my units shown cancel each other out, and I end up with moles of HBr. Thus, if I took 200 milliliters of 0.05 moles of HBr, it would indeed equal the addition of 0.01 moles of HBr, or 0.01 moles of acid. Next, I need to remember that at the equivalence point for simple titrations, the number of moles of acid that I added equals the number of moles of unknown base that we had. So how many moles of KOH from the original solution had to be added? The answer is the same number of moles as we had moles of acid, moles of HBr. In the previous slide, we figured that out as being 0.01 moles of HBr. Hence, that is the final answer, 0.01 moles of KOH. So once again, I want to tell you what we did. We learned that in 200 milliliters of 0.05 molar HBr, there were 
0.01 moles of HBr. Thus, we determined that we had to add 0.01 moles of acid in order to neutralize however much base we had. Keeping in mind that the number of moles of acid that were added has to equal the number of moles of base that were present, those two numbers are the same. 0.01 moles of acid to neutralize our moles of base implies that we also had 0.01 moles of base. You'll note that as this question was originally worded, this value, 250 milliliters, never ended up needing to be used. I'm now going to end by showing you one final problem. Now this problem actually ties together elements from all of the stuff we've discussed in all of our chapter 4 lectures. I'm not going to do this problem for you, but we'll let you attempt it on your own. However, I do want to tell you that if you have the ability to do this, and to do it well and understand exactly what you're doing and why, then you probably have some pretty solid mastery of the concepts we covered in all of our chapter 4 lectures. Here's what the problem says. A solution of 100 milliliters of 0.200 molar KOH is mixed with a solution of 200 milliliters of 0.150 molar nickel sulfate. A. Write the bounce chemical equation for the reaction that occurs. B. What precipitate forms? C. What is the limiting reactant? And D. How many grams of the precipitate form? Now that brings us to the end of our chapter 4 coverage of reactions in aqueous solution. And man, has it been long. At this point, you should feel free to take a break and go reward yourself by, I don't know, by eating a snack, watching some TV, relaxing and reading a book, taking a dump, or whatever it is that you need to do. I look forward to seeing you in our next video lecture in which we will begin Chapter 5's coverage of whatever topic Chapter 5 talks about. I don't really know at this point. <laughs> Until then, have an enjoyable rest of your day.